Now I'm going to work on uh, the counter portion of all this stuff. So let's go. I'm actually going to put this right underneath there. Hold down A. Left click and drag downwards to organize them nicely together. All right. And I want to get the cabinet area before we did the poly bevel. Actually, before we, so right here. Yeah, so I'm going to do another null node here. And this guy is going to be the cab UV prims. And I'm going to use that in an object merge node up here. So I'm going to say get cab prims. Cool. And then let's just uh, drag and drop this guy over here. Turn off our transform information. So this time around, rather than grouping or using the group node, I'm going to pull this primitive off here using a wrangle node. So we're going to use Vax for this one. You could use a group node if you want. I'm just going to kind of switch it up. Call this uh, get top prim. And the way that we're going to do this is I'm going to get the normal from all the primitives. So I'm going to call this prim nerm and we're going to get the prim normal. So we use that Vex function. And for this to work, we need to provide the geometry, which is going to be zero in our, our case. So this first input and then uh, int prim number, that's just going to be the current prim number. And then uh, 0.5 and 0.5 for where we want to sample the normal, which would be the center of all the primitives. So I'm going to do zero and then we want to get, uh, or we want to give it the prim num and then 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 for the sample position. Cool. So then we can just do a check in here. We can say if that uh, prim, if the dot product of the prim norm is uh, less than 0 0.9, right? So we're not pointing upwards. Then I'm going to do a remove primitive here. We'll say remove prim and we'll say at prim num. And we want to remove all the associated points with it as well. Oh, we need to put in the up vector. So zero, one, zero. There we go. So now we're left with just the top prim, which is a perfect starting point for the counter. All right. So with that done, I am going to then use a poly extrude node to give it some height. And we should uh, set up our parameters for this guy before we go too far. So let's go and edit the parameter interface, create a new folder, set it to simple. I'm going to call this the counter uh, folder. Just give it a label of counter. All right, so we're going to need two floats for this. So if we look at our uh, reference again, so this has an offset as well, this little guy right here. All right, so that's what I want to basically allow the user to do. So I'm going to call this the, I'm going to use COU for counter, just for my prefix. I want to try to give all these names a unique name. And um, we're going to call this the front peak, just like we did for the other one. And we'll do a front peak. And then our range is going to be 0.01 to like 0.1. Yeah, 0.1, that'll be fine, I think. We'll set this to like 0.05 to start with. These things are pretty subtle. And then for the height, so this one's going to be the height. So COU um, height, and just give it a label of height. We're going to do a range again of 0 0.01 to something like 0 0.1. These things aren't very thick in terms of, you know, how high they are. So I'll set it this to like 0 0.05 as well. We'll see what happens. Cool. So let's hit accept. Now let's take the height. I'm going to copy this parameter and we'll paste that into the distance here for the poly extrude node. Yeah, that looks good. And then for the front peak. So now what we need to do, oh, we need to include the output back here. So now what we need to do is uh, let's, let's actually create a group using a wrangle node. So we'll call this the uh, front group. So front group. So rather than using group nodes, I'm just doing this all with uh, Vex now. So all we need to do really is compare the normal, right? So if, if our normal is facing forward, then uh, we're, we're going to set a group, right? So let's get that prim norm again. And let's just go and copy this up here. So I don't have to type it all again. So I just want to get the prim normal. 
like so, and then you, you do a control enter to commit that. So now, this time, I'm going to do if uh, dot uh, prim norm, so the dot product of the prim norm, and 0, 0, 1 for the z direction. If that is greater than 0 0.9, that means we're facing forward. So I'm going to set a prim group. So we'll do set prim group on the geometry, the first input geometry there, so 0. The name of the group is going to be front. All right, and we want to do at prim num because you got to give it the ID, so the prim number. So this that at prim num is going to be five in this case. There we go. So there we go, and then I'm going to give it a value of one and tell it to set it like so. And I forgot a T. There we go. And this is complaining about something because that is not the way you spell primnum. There we go. Cool. So now if you open up your groups and attributes and go over to the primitives, you'll see that we are not selecting the uh, front, which is odd. Is it selecting anything? Nothing. Oh, it's because I need to set this to primitives. There you go. Cool. So there we go. Now we've got the front primitive selected, which means now we can just throw down a transform node. Like so. And uh, move that front using this front peak value that we set up in our controls. There we go. So now we got control over that. Perfect. So now let's uh, UV this. I'm going to go and grab this version of the box UV maps mapping node. And just make sure we check it. So hit five. And that one did not like that one at all. Let's check our seams here. Oh, well, it just didn't even transfer. Oh, I see. And so basically what happened was I had an incoming, so I checked this guy. Yeah, this one already had seams, the seam group on it, but it was empty. And so I just needed to set the group transfer to uh, overwrite. So now we're looking good. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. And then finally, I'm just going to poly bevel. So I'll just copy this guy because it's already got the relative expression hooked up there and bevel it and then we'll just drop down a null node here we'll call this uh out counter and then we need to assign it to our assembly here so add another slot there we go perfect we have a nice start on our prop here so let's go back to our node here and do a shift o put a uh, net box around this We'll call this uh, counter. Cool. So let's check all of our parameters again. That looks like it's working. Check our UVs. We need to do some work to uh, lay these guys out later on, but that's all working as well. That looks good. Wood, thic wood thickness still working. Yep. Cool. Yeah, it's coming along. All right. So now we need to start working on um, the the actual front of the cabinet, so all the drawers and the doors. And uh, what we're going to be doing is setting up um, a system to allow the user to basically, on a per primitive basis, set whether or not they want drawers or doors or some sort of just decorative element to it. That way, they have you know complete control over uh, the look of their particular prop, and you then have the ability to create you know, lots of variations of the particular prop as well. So let's do that in the uh, next video. Well, actually, it's going to take a few videos to get through it all because we're going to have to go over multi parms and get everything set up appropriately. So it'll probably be a few bits. Thanks so much.